Hello class, in this video we're going to be reviewing how we can compare ratios. Now before I actually review comparing ratios, we want to talk about what a ratio actually is. So a ratio is just a special way of comparing two or more things. So for example, if I had this story over here of mixing seven cups of concentrate and, I'm sorry, three cups of concentrate and seven cups of water, I would write this in th one of three ways. I can choose to do it with a colon by saying 3 to 7, or I can write it with the word 2, 3 cups of concentrate to 7 cups of water, or I can also write it as a fraction, 3 over 7. Now for uh, this example, I'm mostly going to be sticking with the comma, but or I'm sorry, the colon, but you guys can write it any way you guys feel like. Now, in our first example, we're going to be comparing two sets of students and how they do in social studies. So first we have Amy and Frank, and we're comparing the numbers of A's they get on assignments versus the number of B's. Now, in this example, it's actually pretty easy to see which student is a bit more successful because they have the same number of B's, but in A's, we can see that Amy tends to get a few more A's than Frank does. Now, in our next example, we can see that between Chris and Marie, they have the same number of A's, but the numbers of B's are different. Now again, they have the same number of A-level grades, but it looks like it takes Marie a few more B's to get to the same number of A-level grades that Chris does. So in this example, Chris would actually be more successful within social studies. Now in our next example, we're going to be comparing Chris and our student from our last example, Frank, and to see which of these two students is more successful in class. Now, the trouble we run into here is we can see that the number of A's and the number of B's they have is different for both of these students. Chris has 10 A's and 20 B's. Frank has 14 A's and 30 B's. So we have to find a way to accurately portray what student's faring better in class. And the way we're going to do that is by finding a multiple a common multiple between categories. So they have to have the same number of A's or the same number of B's for us to make a real comparison. And the way we do this, because a lot of questions, uh, the main question I get during this section of class is, you know, how do you find a common multiple? What's the best way to do it? And personally for me and most students, if you know your multiplication facts really well, you'll be able to kind of eyeball it just by looking at the two numbers you're given. But let's say you have a complicated number, like between 10 and 14, that might not be um, as visible to some students. Uh, you can make a list of multiples. Now, I'm going to solve this problem in one of two ways. I'm just going to say that before we move on. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is write uh, your two uh, ratios. Again, that's 10 to 20 and 14 to 30. So 10 to 20 for Chris and 14 to 30 for Frank. And I'm going to do this a couple ways, and I'm going to show you just how in a moment. So I'm going to rewrite this for my second way to write my multiple, or my comparison, I should say. Now, the first example of what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a way to compare uh, the number of A's they have. So I want them to have the same number of A's. Now, I can see from here that the common multiple is going to be 70. But for those of you who might not be able to see that just by eyeballing these two numbers, we're going to make a list of multiples. So we're going to do 10 and 14. And what I like to do is list off the multiples at the same time. So 10 times 1 is 10, 10 times, or 14 times 1 is 14. Times 2 of these, times 2 for both of these would be 20 and 28. Then times 3 for both of these would be 30 and 42 times 4 would be 40 and 56 times 5 would be 50 and 70 times 6 would be 60 and 84 times 7 would be 70, and I'm going to stop right here because I can see we have a match, that both of these will multiply into 70. So I'm going to write 70 as my multiple over here. I'm just going to put a space over here to keep these separate. 
for both of these. So the number of a's they're both going to have is 70. Now I know from 10 to 70 I multiply by 7. I can even check for my list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 14 to 70 is times 5. I can see that from my list as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now that I know that he's going to have uh, Chris in this example, I'm going to rewrite his name here so we remember who is who. Chris in this example has ten five, uh, sorry, seven times as many A's. So he's going to have to have seven times as many B's as well to make sure that this list stays the same. So there's going to be 140 B's in order for Chris to get 70 A's. Here, Frank will need 150 because we're multiplying this by five. He has five times as many A's. So Frank should also have five times as many B's. So here we can actually see Chris is the more successful of the two students because they both have the same number of A's, but he has less B's, which means he's taken less tests to get to 70 A's. Now, you can do this as well for between these two. So now we're going to make sure they have the same number of B's for these two students. And I can see that a common multiple between these two is 60. Now, you can do this by checking the multiples of these two numbers, and I'm not going to do this each and every time, just for this example. 20 times 1 is 20, that's 30. We have 40 and 60. 60, and I'll stop right here, because I can see we have a common multiple. So 20 times 3 is 60, that means we'll have 30 A's over here, because we multiply that by 3. Here we have double the number of B's, so I'm going to double the amount of A's that Frank gets. And here, even though we found a common multiple for the number of B's versus the number of A's in this example, we can see that Chris is actually still the more successful of the two students because he has more A's than Frank does. Now over these next few examples, if you want to try these ahead and pause the video um, to see if you are doing this correctly, you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to give you about one to five seconds uh, for you to pause, and then I'm going to jump right into the next question to go over the problem with you. All right, now that you had some time to try that on your own, let's do this together. So I know the ratio between these two is two to three for Mark to see who spends more time outside. And Joe, that's 8 to 13. Now, I can see that we have a common multiple for the hours outside of 8, which means I can actually save some time because I don't have to do anything to this ratio because I know this just multiplied by 1. But for here, we had to multiply by 4 to get the number of hours outside to match Joe's. So I have 4 times the amount of hours outside, which means I also have 4 times the amount of hours inside. So I can actually see that Mark is the student who spends most of their time outside because while they have the same number of hours outside, Mark spends a little bit less of his time inside. Now in this next example, we're going to see which of these two candy bars is made up of more filling. Now here we have the Snickers bar. I'm going to write this up here so we don't forget which is made of six parts of grams of filling and 15 parts of chocolate. And Twix is made up of five grams of filling and 12 parts chocolate. Now I can see right here, it's probably going to be easier for me to find a common multiple between the grams of filling. So that's what I'm gonna do first. So here, between six and five, that common multiple is 30. That's multiplied by five. 15 times five, is going to give me 75. Now again, our common multiple is 30. That means we multiply this by 6. And I know that 12 times 6 is going to give me 72. So while these both have the same amount of filling, I can see that Snickers has a little bit uh, more chocolate than Twix does. So I'm actually going to say that Twix has more of its candy bar made of filling because, again, they have the same amount of filling, but Twix uses a little bit less chocolate in this example. 
I hope you've uh, relearned how to compare ratios. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to come in uh, during morning tutoring hours and lunchtime tutoring hours. Happy studying.